Deirdre, trying to understand consciousness, one of the ways we do it is on a comparative basis, comparing humans on a spectrum with other mammals and all animals for that matter. And the question is, is the spectrum fairly linear or is there a big step function difference when it comes to human beings? And there are lots of arguments and lots of different uh, um, uh, disciplines about that. Let's look specifically at dreaming. Uh, in which you've done a great deal of research and are an expert. Uh, can that help us differentiate uh, humans from animals and determine the relationship between human beings and, and animals in any way? Yeah, I think in certain ways. I mean, there's certain facts like that uh, rapid eye movement sleep in which most dreams occur basically happens in almost all mammals and not in most all non-mammals. So that, that tells us something about having this huge thing in common. Of course, having something in common with mammals that we don't with other groups is, is maybe not profound. I mean, I certainly think that humans are definitely unique in the sense that cockroaches are also unique. Um, but whether we're sort of uniquely off at the end of some linear continuum, which, which that usually implies, um, I think is much more questionable. And in fact, the, the dreams would support there being differences that are not on that linear continuum. What, why is that? What would be about human dreams that we think are sufficiently different than animals? Well, when, when you see the similar rapid eye movement sleep, which okay. are related to dreams, you said you already said that, that animals have... Yeah, a, it looks, it, it exists in all mammals. It sort of looks more similar as mammals get larger. They're likely to have more like our length of REM cycle than small, small-brained mammals are. Primates are the first ones to have a significant prefrontal cortex, which is an area that's distinctively mm. shut down. So there's some patterns of our dreaming sleep that really you can't talk about in other types of brains, but you begin to see in primates. Mm -hmm. so, so there's one way in, in which lots of it is linear. On the other hand, I said most mammals have REM sleep. And the cetaceans, the whales and dolphins, um, which are a group who have even larger and even more complex brains than ours. Larger, um, I'm not sure more complex. They don't have as much prefrontal area, but if you count complexity as just curves and undulations and different structures, they definitely lack some that we think of as significant in primates. On the other hand, in areas that have to do with, we think, social relationships in most mammals, they sort of have new areas growing mm. off them that we don't quite know what they're for. Mm -hmm. So although I think we're always trying to map things as to whether they're equal to human, I think easily some of the other large brain, not close relatives can have sure. things we we don't. Kind of like I think everyone's seen those uh, monkey videos where the monkeys, the chimpanzees are tracking numbers that have disappeared off the screen <laughs> considerably better than the college <laughs> students. I mean, just for <laughs> visual memory alone, right. the chimpanzee right. brain does that better than. Right. But, but the cetaceans are very different from us. And they they either don't have REM sleep or have very little, but that's because they sleep with one side of their brain at a time. Their left hemisphere goes to sleep while their right hemisphere <laughs> stays completely active, and then that switches off. They have times where they're wide awake on both sides, mm -hmm, and they're mm -hmm. the most functional then, and they can do a more limited repertoire while one side sleeps. And to try to imagine what it would be like to have one hemisphere completely active and the other one comatose um, would be a very unusual state of consciousness. Sure. Must have something to do with their their liquid environment in some way. Um, it 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 seems it seems to be their solution to how to breathe while mm -hmm, sleeping. Mm -hmm. Although it's sure. not the only one because seals don't do it that way. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but it certainly has something to do with being in the water, making you want to stay more alert. But still, it must result in just a completely different sleep experience. Whether you would call that a dream when one side of your brain <laughs> drops out and the other hemisphere <laughs> is active. But anyway, that, that's, that's an example of the sort of very different can't tell. But within primates, who are, you know, clearly the, the most 
the most like us, that the patterns are very similar to the extent they have prefrontal areas, those are less active. The We can't for sh be sure what are associated with visual imagery in them because they can't report it, but it looks like similar parts of the visual cortex are, are active. Well, what's interesting is that most of the differences we talk about between humans and animals relate to language in, in, in waking mm -hmm. life. But language in dreaming life is not even very important in humans. And visual imagery is far more important. Mm -hmm. So it may be in dreams that we're even more similar to animals because language is a, as a function drops out to, to a large degree. Well, we are more similar in certain ways in that, like I say, our prefrontal areas are the most distinctive part mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. our brain and shared mainly with other primates, and that's the area that damps down the most. Uh, it, it's less easy to tell how the visual areas um, activating the most go, because like I say, in humans, we know which areas have more to do with direct sensory input versus right, visual right. imagery and we because we can report what we're doing when one or the other is and and it's an extrapolation to even think about whether animals have the the visual imagery areas certainly it's more similar with us and other animals where vision is the primary sense and they're animals that well i mean they go by echolocation even but others where smell is much more important right, right. and so it's a little bit it's a little bit harder to to compare so so in some animals their dream they may dream more with the, the smell sensation it's not impossible you're saying yes but an, another aspect is that we don't remember most of our dreams because the the mechanism that transfers short-term to long-term memory is shut off mm -hmm. and activates only as we wake up. But the biochemistry of that would only need to be the slightest bit different in either direction to have no dream recall ever mm -hmm. or to have complete oh. dream recall. Mm -hmm. And so it's very easy to imagine that other species have one or the mm -hmm. other of, of those yeah. and, and just uh, therefore a completely different experience. Fascinating probe dreams. to the nature of consciousness, uh, both uh, both in humans and uh, in comparative uh, uh, comparative uh, biology. Mm -hmm.